it's recommended that you do it between four and six months. Um, and it's also just easier because we started at 10 months. And at that point, Jordan already knew how to stand up. Mm -hmm. He knew how to crawl. And so it made it much more difficult to sleep train him because he could easily just stand up uh, in his crib and be like, hey. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, hello. And, I know I, you hear me. That is true. And you're, you're right on that. Um, but I will say that really the only night that when we actually start, when we actually committed to sleep training and do the cry it out method, the first night was absolutely rough. Yeah, I was okay. going to say out of the seven, like they say the three to seven days, I will say that we're very fortunate. I feel like we only had one really bad night right. and that was the first night. So like we only had the bad first night and then by night two, it really wasn't that bad. I mean, he might have woke up maybe like once or something. But other mm -hmm. than that, um, night by night two, he actually like he actually really recognized like, oh, they're not coming to get me. And like I need to self-soothe myself, which was really pretty remarkable, to be honest, because I, I thought it was going to be, you know, a full week of him really trying to figure it out. But by night two, he was a lot better. I would say 80 percent better than yeah. he was on night one. And then after night two. So for night three, like he slept through the entire night yeah. and ever since then he has slept through the entire night. So my, my recommendation is to start sleep training as soon as you possibly can, because yes, it sucks. The first couple of days probably is going to be, but at the end of the day, the sooner you start, the sooner you can have a good night's rest without really having to worry so much about like him waking up throughout the night and getting him and, and rocking him back to sleep and but doing also like, all the mm -hmm. extra curricular things that you have to do in the middle of the night, which we were doing for nine, 10 months. But by, not, by, by when we started sleep training, like this has been the most rest we have gotten since we've had our baby. Yeah. And sure. also for sure, like you definitely get your sleep and you get your nights back, but it's also so important for the baby as well. Like when they say sleep training, they're not just signing. So like parents, you can get some sleep, but it's also very important for the baby's development. That's when they grow the most when exactly. they're sleeping. Exactly. Um, and it's, it's important for brain development and things like that. So um, you really do want to make sure your child is getting ample enough sleep. And of course, like in the newborn stage, they're sleeping uh, an ex extended amount of time, but as they get older, their wake windows are, are um, longer and their periods of rest at night should be ideally around like that 12 hours. They should be getting like 12 hours of sleep so that they're um, developing. And that's that's how they grow. And, you know, everything from their head to their, you know, their legs, arms, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's a win win for both the parents and for the baby because right. it's super important for the baby's growth and development. Mm -hmm. But as parents, you also kind of get your night back, you get rest. And then that way you both can show up and be the parent you want to be for your child because you feel like you're well rested. You've gotten ample enough right. sleep and there's going to be trial and error with that. There may be some nights where your child probably regresses a little bit and you may have to deviate from the plan a little bit. But um, the biggest thing when it does come to sleep training, because there are multiple methods, we did the cry it out method, um, but there's like the Ferber method and, um, a bunch of other methods as well that we could provide if you if you really want to know. But whichever method you stick with, you have to be consistent. Right. Building a happy home, yeah. building a happy marriage, building a happy family. All of those things take day in and day out work. Like yeah. you said, it's about those routines, it's about those habits. And building those healthy habits provides you the responsibility for you to pour into your marriage, to pour into your relationship, and to pour into yourself. 